Military officials briefed local legislators on the final SEIS and the major differences between the Guam military buildup plans back in 2010 and the buildup plans now. Here's more. Rear Admiral Babette Bolivar and Joint Guam Program Office Forward Director Dan Sean briefed island senators today on the final SEIS for the Guam military buildup. We talked about where we were in terms of numbers, you know, um, the initial number that was, was supposed to come in here in, in 2010 and now what, what it is uh, 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 in accordance with this particular document. The plan in 2010 was to bring in 8,600 Marines and 9,000 dependents to Guam over a span of five years, increasing the population by 79,000 new people at its peak and 33,000 when it was settled. Now that has lessened to 5,000 Marines and 1,300 dependents over a span of 12 years, increasing the population by less than 10,000 people at its peak and 7,400 people when settled. Another major difference involves the amount of land needed and the amount of native limestone forest that will have to be cleared for the main cantonment, housing area, and live fire training range complex. Originally, the main cantonment and housing areas were both going to be placed at Finnegayan. This would have required 688 acres of non-federal land. The preferred alternative now for the main cantonment is still at Finnegayan, but the preferred alternative for the housing area has been moved to the Anderson Air Force Base. Commander Sean explains that Anderson Air Force Base would require less land clearing and also has some existing infrastructure that can be used as well. One of the biggest changes from 2010 is the location of the live fire training range complex, which was originally going to be built in the village of Poggett. Now it's going to be placed at the Anderson Air Force Base's northwest field, which overlooks the Retidian Wildlife Refuge. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department has been in negotiations with the Department of Defense regarding this plan. Public access to the Retidian Unit is very important and it's recognized as a concern. The requirement within the SEIS is that the ranges have up to 39 weeks a year of being active. So potentially could there be 39 weeks of impact? Yes. The reality of it is not all the ranges are active at all times. So again, those details still need to be worked out. These details are among the many things that DOD is still working out with U.S. Fish and Wildlife. The devils are in the detail here because when we were asking questions from the briefing, a lot of that that they were deferring to the details of each chapter. And the but speaker says to read each chapter of this 900-page document is difficult, especially when the record of decision can be released in just 30 days. Nevertheless, military officials seem content with the findings of the final SEIS, saying it's a reflection of the hard work DOD has put into planning for the buildup while taking the community's concerns into consideration. The main thing is that, is that we, we listened to the people. We listened to the government and that, you know, it, we took in all of those comments and we rebuilt um, that document based on the input we received. So it uh, just shows, uh, shows to our dedication that, that uh, you know, we are in this for a partnership and that we're, we're in it for the long haul. The next step in the NEPA process for the military buildup is the signing of the record of decision, which can happen no sooner than 30 days after the release of the final SEIS. The record of decision will officially announce DOD's final decisions on the relocation of Marines from Okinawa to Guam.